Hey guys, welcome to RC Video Reviews. I see the fun and games and shenanigans have already started, which is awesome. That's good. Uh, Blair was in first, followed by Freddy. Freddy's getting slow, and of course Robert. Robert was lagging behind, and uh, I saw a drone pilot. Elias popped in. He's just waking up down there in the land down under. And David Knutes wasted no time getting a zinger in. That was good. I like that one. That's a good, that's a classic David, the David Knutes. So nice one. H Speed, how you doing? And um, Philip from Australia also as well. We got another Aussie in the crew. And then Leo Ponce, hello. Johnny Come Lately, can you guys hear me okay? It looks like it says it's okay. So, you know, look, <laughs> I was making a joke about this earlier. We've had rain every day. For, for a week and and when you complain about the rain every day florida says oh hold my beer and it decides to give us a tropical storm so yeah that's a common thing these days we get to see the rain every single day in the forecast but you know at the end of the day the grass likes it so i guess that's fine anyway we're here to do a first look on this wild stick 1f and you know the idea that i had was initially the quad but you can use these for all kinds of things. It doesn't have to be limited to quads or planes or whatever. Um, the main question I have is not whether or not it, you know, it, we all know it's a screwdriver, right? The, the, the real, Robert says you reap what you sow. What did I do? David's the, David's the one popping the jokes, man. I was just, I think it's funny. That's all. Anyway, um, the real question on this thing for me comes down to torque. Does it have the torque to be usable in the hobby and uh, you know I've already did done a little reading on it and kind of checked it out and I, I really don't care about unboxes I hate them so let's just get that out of the way um, so we'll get into what's in all these things in a minute we'll just start tearing these open I know one thing that that is actually kind of neat that came that came with this little thing is this little magnetized screw mat I guess that's that's not a that that's not terrible. That's not a terrible thing to have. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've torn stuff apart and I'm sitting there going, where's my screw? <laughs> what did I do with them? So that's not a bad thing to have. I don't, I guess, no, nope, that's not metal. Well, we'll get to it in a minute, I guess. We'll just set that aside, but a little screw mat, not, not terrible. And then I know there's a little tool kit in here. And, you know, I think this would be, if you're building airplanes, might maybe think about servos and, you know, the other one that would really be useful on this one are the control horns. That's another one I thought, building fixed wing, the control horns, servo mounts, that kind of stuff. This would be a handy little thing to do. They, they do include some kind of odd things in here. I, I know what most of this stuff is, but so if you're wondering, it's got a suction cup. That's for if you're doing cell phone repair. So this is a little wedge tool to help pry cell phone glass off the case. And that suction cup is meant to ask me how I know <laughs> I've done cell phone repair for my, my kids, my kids, you know, and this is a magnetizer demagnetizer. I don't know exactly how that works yet, but I guess the idea is use it to magnetize the screws or the screw tips. I guess if you're going to use your screw tips, you want those magnetized, you can do that as well. So a little magnetizer demagnetizer this is one of the strangest things i i knew about in the kit it's just a little jar full of screws <laughs> so maybe they're for practicing in case you don't have your own screws i'm not i'm not really sure uh so jdm dino systems made it hello sean hawkins you're exact on yeah, yeah i figured that out after i set it on there i was thinking maybe the blade might be metal though that's what i was kind of thinking was maybe the blade yeah the blade is the blade the blades that's magnet that's magnetized so anyway, that's what I was looking for was the blade. Um, anyway, a little USB co cable. It's a mini USB, a little white one for charging. Um, and then in here, the stand. This has been funny uh, looking at the stand because this is not a... Let's see if I can open it without destroying the box. I want to be a little careful with this because I'm not 100% sure this is going to stay. A lot of it has to do with whether or not it has a torque to do what I want it to do. So I don't want to... I don't want to be destructive with it, but the stand is kind of a, a, a unique little thing. It's a weighted stand. And by the way, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of parts for this on Thingiverse. If you go out to Thingiverse, uh, one of the big gripes about this thing is the way they store the bits and Thingiverse has some really nice prints for storing the bits actually. So, um, if this stays, I'll be looking into doing that, but that's the stand. It's heavy. That's a good heavy stand. And the idea is it's meant to keep the, uh, it's meant to keep the, uh, Pen upright for you. It is not a charging stand though. 
And then this is what I thought was another little neat little thing about this particular device is it comes with this kind of a nice little carrying case. And the idea behind the case is it carries uh, both the, the screwdriver and one of the rows of bits. So if you're going to travel with this, you can throw that in your field box and uh, travel with that and keep things kind of together. So there's that. Now we'll get into the hardware. Now we're getting down to the, the meat and potatoes of it. And um, if you guys want to stick around for a little bit, I'll give you some updates on what's going on with Edge. There's been a lot of activity on Edge. We probably, you guys probably want to hear about that. Uh, Stuck in Trees is back. How you doing, buddy? Four Eyes FPV, hello. Um, I thought it was a charger. Yeah, it's not a charger. It's just a lead weight. But according, according to the Xiaomi, Xiaomi, I don't know if I say that right, the Xiaomi website, say that three times fast. It's kind of fun to say, Xiaomi. Um, according to their website, they say 180 days of standby and like two straight days of operation or two, I don't know, two straight hours of operation, something like that. So lots of bits. There's like 60 some odd bits in this thing. By the way, link in the description if you want to get one. Um, I found mine on Amazon and I paid $45 for it. Freddie found one and put a link in the hot deal section on Discord at AliExpress for like $37. So a couple dollars cheaper. Um, the benefit, of course, with Amazon is no hassle returns. So if you don't like it or it doesn't work for you, you're not going to have any trouble returning it to Amazon. So pay a little extra. That's kind of the deal, but you get something out of it. All right. So the uh, I, one of the things I knew right away about this, and I can see why some people, I read reviews. I didn't watch any videos, but I read re reviews on this. One of the complaints I saw right away on this thing is that the lead is nice, very nice, but it's not active until you start spinning the bit, which if you think about it, if you're putting a screwdriver down, you kind of need the light to be on so you can see where to put the bit on the screw first. And then, and then while you're actually turning the screw, you don't need to see it. So kind of a little silly the way they did that. I think it was a cheap way out, I think, really, to be honest. Um, so it looks like forward is down and then back is, rever is uh, reverses on the top here. And then as far as the holder goes, I've seen people, put, it's kind of funny, they put it in wrong. They're like, well, it's, it's flopping all over. But there's this little bevel, I don't know, you can see it right there. A little bit of a bevel in there and that's meant to help kind of keep it straight on the desk. So the cool thing about this is that if you did leave this on your desk, it doesn't look terrible. It's not like you're leaving stack of screwdrivers on your desk it looks kind of ornamental almost i mean to be honest i don't know if i can get the speaker in here yeah look at that i mean it's like the same color as my desktop speaker so i could put it right next to that and it almost looks like it belongs on the desk uh there's a usb port on the back for charging and um it is lithium ion powered so now as far as the bits i'll get i'll get the rest of the bits out and we'll take a look at it and then i'll see if i can track down the one for the quad and we'll see how it does i've got a quad sitting here and we'll just see how it does working on the on the M3 nuts that I've got in there, just to see. I, I'm curious. I want to know how how it does in terms of torque. Uh, my driver I showed you is is the Elias says he's got the Xiaomi. I'm not even gonna try that word. Mijia, Mijia, Mijia driver. <laughs> Mijia is that midget? <laughs> I don't know. That's, I shouldn't say that. That's not nice. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, the, the storage, that's definitely one of the things that I saw as a complaint about these things is the way they store the, the bits in these tubes. I can already see how that's kind of a, kind of a pain to get these, to get those out. There we go. Because it creates a vacuum. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, it's their bits, you know, it's a, it's unique, I guess, in the sense that if you wanted to get a set of these ready to travel, uh, these, these will fit in the case for you so one one there and then the driver there and then uh, your lid and it's a little magnetic top so I guess the question really is going to be how well does it stay well, I guess that's okay that'll travel well I suppose right okay uh, let's open the last tube I want to find the the hex driver so we can try it out that's the that's what everybody that's what I want to know so how's it going to work um, let's see. Mine is rated at two Newton, two point two Newton meters. Okay. And I think it makes sense to take the stopper off the top because if you don't, you create a vacuum. And of course, getting the stopper off the top is a 
I'm not gonna lie. A little annoying. They don't have a handle on it. It says open here. Yeah, there's no handle. It's kind of, it's kind of, I'm not gonna lie, that's annoying. All right, let's see. Does this one have the hex? I see torques. I see, no, these are all star bits. Star, star, so, oh, here they are on the side, I guess. So T2, T3, T4, all the way through T20, and then P25, P6, Y0.6, Y0 Y1, Y2, Y2.5, and Y3. That might be, I'm kind of guessing that might be for like, uh, when they say Y, is that a cell phone bit? Is that one of those... One of those weird... No, that's just a crosshead, man. That's all that is. That's just a uh, Phillips driver. Alright, let me find the hex driver. Uh, let's see. Square drivers, triangle. There's a triangle looking driver. And the square drivers and then the straight slots. And they have... I noticed this too. I think that's a special key. There's like a U, a U bit. I've, ne I've never really used those before, but I'm pretty sure I've seen that type of screw where all it has is two holes in the top of the head. I'm not sure what that's called, but I'm pretty sure I've seen that before. It's like a security bit. So that doesn't, that's not terrible, I suppose, right? Have those little security bits in there. All right, not in there. Is it in here? Where's the hex? There it is. Hex two. There it is. I found it. In the first one that I looked at. Bits are like children. You'd have to pick your favorites. Yeah, I think <laughs> Robert. Robert, that's terrible, man. You don't have, there's no favorite kids. I love all my kids. I love all my kids. Uh, let's see. Are these hex bits? I guess they are. Let's see if I can figure out the right one for the quad. How about that? First shot. All right, let's try it. I just, I just want to know, right? This is the, to me, this is the money right here. I want to know if I, if I'm using this in my quad, I just need to know if it's going to work. I want to know. All right, let me just pull this thing out. There's no preparation, guys. I, I, this is, this quad's been flown. I haven't done anything to it except take it off the rack. That's all I've done. So I'm just going to set the bit on there and, oops, maybe I better hold it a little better. Okay, and keep in mind I haven't charged it yet. So here's what I'm doing. If you're not, if you if you're unable to spot it, when I first put the driver on there and start it, here let me turn it to the side a little. When I first put the driver and on the on the bit on the on the nut and hold it and then hit the button, it doesn't go. But if you give it a if you break it loose quick and then hit it, it spins it right out. And it does say in the book that it can be used in manual mode like that. And I'll also point out it's not fully charged. I don't know what the charge state is on this thing, but I did not charge it. I mean, it's, this is fresh out of the box. So, yeah, I mean, I guess there's some value in that. It's not, it's not a, I guess, for torque. You know, let's drive one in and see what happens. Yeah, that's okay. It seems to, like, I'll have to read the book and see. But it seems to go into like a manual lock, so I wouldn't turn it much harder than that by hand anyway. So it seems like you can use the driver to drive it down. So I'll do the forward on this one. I'll, I'll just kind of drive that one in. So it comes to a stop and then just let go of the button and give it a little half twist and you're done. I can live with that. I can live with that. So let's see. Uh, how do you know where to put the tip? <laughs> David. <laughs> Well, you see, son. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this group. All right. Robert says the bits are like children. You'd have to pick your favorites. We covered that. Um, on Telus boxes, your favorite child should be your own. I know that now. <laughs> you guys, man. Is everyone drinking tonight but me? What the heck is going on here? That's pretty funny, though. I mean, David came in with us right off the start, man. He was dropping them like kapow. You know, hey, tip your waiters and waitresses. They're working hard for you. Is this thing on? All right. Wow. Oh, wow. So that's more than what we need to use. Um, yeah. So, so Elias, what I'd say about it is it seems to be, it, again, it's not, you're not getting the full torque lockdown, but it's enough, it's enough to, it's enough to save this all, you know, I mean, how many times have you guys like putting these top plates on, man, it drives you nuts, especially when you realize after you get one put on that you miss something. Yeah, 
you just have to you're gonna have to embrace the horror that you'll have to give it a half a twist when you're done or to unlatch it so if you if you've got one latched down and you want to you want to get it started oops let me just turn this back here yeah so it doesn't go from a cold start well it did that time i hit the button a few times and it did it from a start um but i think i think you're gonna have to get used to the idea of giving it a little you know quarter twist or eighth twist on the way so not bad all right, so that's more than we need. It's morning here, no drinking, I'm grabbing numbers. All right, grabbing numbers. Playing the numbers, grabbing the numbers. So, well, there we go. I mean, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. You guys know what I'm gonna do, right? It's gonna sit here on the desk and I'll make sure to have it handy for my next build. But obviously you got all the tips you can ever need. I mean, you guys know that, you guys all know what this means, right? You get, you get all these tips and you wind up, you're gonna wind up with three or four that you use all the time, right? Um, you know, I'll tell you another place where I'll, I know I'll use it. I've been fiddling around with these project boxes and these little screws on the back. That's another one. You know, that's another use case for something like this. Nice to have that handy and just stick the stick the little bit in there and unscrew it. Because again, same thing. If if you unscrew these, they give they give these like half inch long screws that have absolutely no load. So to get these out, you're you're sitting here twist twist twist. So that's not bad. Not bad. Uh, use the electric slide to get the bolt in and then use the manual top set it to final. Yeah, that's exactly what I think the, the, the strategy is going to be is just to uh, be willing to give it a little twist right at the end or right at the beginning. You know, that seems like the ideal scenario. So what I'll do is I'll I'll try it out for a while. I'll give it a full charge and um, I'll let you guys know the next quad build. I'll use it and see how it goes. But, you know, think about the bottom. Look at that. Look at look at all those. <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about here? Like, that's kind of a pain. And then, you know, by the time you're done with this, you're like, you, you got to give your forearm a rest. That's a lot of screws to put in in one step. I mean, I'll admit this is a luxury item. Let's let's be honest, right? It's a little bit of an extravagance. But um, if you build a lot, it, it's not a bad thing to have handy. And I do. I do. I build a lot. So I think something like this might be nice to have around. So more to come on that. That's the first look of the Xiaomi F. What is this thing called again? The F1 Plus? 1F Plus. That's what it is. It's not sponsored, so I don't care. It's a WoW Stick 1F Plus. 1F Plus. There we go. And this one is a 69 in 1. Link's in the description if you want one. And uh, I don't know. I think it'll do. I think it'll do. Um, all right. That's it on that. More to come. I'm going to, once I get, now you guys, if you're not, if you didn't know it or not, I'm, I'm working on some upgrades on my printer that didn't go well, so I'm waiting for a replacement part. And uh, once that gets done, I'll probably go ahead and print the, the parts for this that I was telling you guys about, the bit holder. I'll print that out and see how that works, and uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, I think I like it. I think I like it. One thing about it, for sure, is that it's a quality piece. It does not, it doesn't feel cheap. The only thing that I think I don't like about it is I don't, I don't like the idea that it's not a, a replaceable battery. It would kind of annoy me if I couldn't take this battery out when it was time, because you all know when a battery gets soft. Uh, I would kind of like to be able to take that out and replace it, but right now at this point, I'm not willing to destroy it to figure out how, but my guess is that black plastic cap comes off with USB, um, possibly a retaining wing up there right under that LED, and that, that end might come off instead. Um, I don't see anything on the tube that would come off though, so it's going to probably be one end or the other. But that would be the one annoyance about this thing is not having a serviceable battery, right? I guess when when you realize the battery is getting soft, would you you really want to spend the money to get another one? Well, I guess maybe if you use it so much the battery does get soft, you might be willing to buy another one. All right, we'll set all that stuff aside. Let me give you guys a quick. Uh, I was shocked destroying screws. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Skyrider says that would work great for my field box using my one third pup. Yeah, I know this and think of servo screws and you know another one that would really I think this would be really useful on are the control horns because you know you get that you get that control horn started and, you, and you, if you wind up twisting it by hand it gets out of out of line things happen. So and even a servo uh, mounting a servo into the into the servo holder that wouldn't be a terrible use case for something like that. And even driving in your firewall mounts on your brushless motors, you know, wouldn't be terrible for that either. So I think there's a lot of use cases in the hobby for it. Um, definitely not a high torque device, though. No, no two ways around that. But it does seem to have a pretty good lock. I mean, I'm giving that some pretty good torque, and that's that's got a lock. So um, that's not terrible. All right, let's see. 
Suppose you could get extra. I'm not sure extra what the extra is for eyes. Maybe help me out. Rudy says, I would love something like this, but I feel like I need a way longer and narrower drive to get into finicky electronics. Yeah, or an extension, right? Yeah, and you're not wrong about that. Some, some uh, you know, there are definitely times when I need, I need every bit of a jeweler screwdriver to get where I'm going. So yeah, probably not. That's true. Probably not for every single use case, but you know, look at this thing. Well, this is what I was, when I saw this, this is what I thought of, <laughs> you know, when I, I saw this, I thought, Ooh, quad, <laughs> that'd be nice. Cause you can see how much is happening right there. This would be really nice to make that change out for sure. So well, more to come. All right, let's see. Yeah. Or an extension, but every time I've tried those, I know not only did, not only did they not fit, but then you wind up freaking losing them and you just had to put all these spare parts all over the place too. That's what I mean about this. Probably what I'll probably do is go through here and pick the most used, uh, uh, Phillips, the most used straight slot, the most used hex head and the rest of them probably go in a box. You know what I mean? So my hex drivers, my Phillips drivers, my straight slots, they'll be on the desk where I can get to them and the rest will wind up in a box. I've got, I don't even know how many kits of this kind of thing I have in my big toolbox in the garage. I probably half a dozen of these types of kits, but it's always the ones I use all the time that wind up uh, getting used up and lost. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely not a just you issue, man. I have, like I said, I probably have a half a dozen sets of these types of things, you know, sitting in my box that I never use and, and I never need them. They just have weird bits that I don't use. Oh, although, here, check this out. Let me pull this. I, I just spotted that while we were talking. You might want to see this one. Um, that here you go, here you go. Look at that. So there's some. There's a pretty long. That's a pretty long Phillips and straight slot. There's a large Phillips. One of these. Uh, that's a hex driver and a small Phillips driver right there. So that's not bad. That's not terrible. I think that'll help. Uh, stand, is this standard one quarter inch hex? No, no, this is definitely smaller than that. I'm not sure what the hex size in, is on this. I will, uh, I'll look in the spec sheet when I find it afterwards. I'll post it in the description for you if you want. But yeah, it's definitely not a quarter. Yeah, absolutely not a quarter. Um, let's see. Let's see. Bit size are four by, tw they're four by tw 28 millimeter. And it says 45 millimeter is what it says right there. Are you going to focus? There we go. Bit size four by 28 and then slash 45 millimeter. Not sure if that tells you what you need, but that's the number. All right. So, Hey, real quick on edge, um, the development continues. They are really okay. So on the touchscreen issue, uh, what I can tell you is that there's been a lot of troubleshooting effort on the touchscreen issue. And it's not Edge. Um, uh, just to be clear, it's not the it's not the firmware. Uh, it's not sorry. It's not the operating system. It's not the Edge uh, software that's being developed. The issue lies in the implementation of the touch firmware. So there's a lot of very detailed work going on, and they've looked at a couple of different areas related to timing around the touch interface, polling rate around how many pixels are sampled at a time. And the most recent thing that they've been focused on is the um, there's a there's a voltage uh, measurement they've been taking and they're not really excited about how high that voltage goes during a movement on the screen. So right now they're they're going to broker a conversation with the uh, the chip controller for the touch interface on the Radio Master and the eSheen to find out if they can get some more detail about what exactly the controller is doing. Um, they do have a workaround that they've put in place that um, basically it just says, okay, if we get a lockup, let's just reset touch. And that happens so fast. You don't even know what happens. It doesn't move you out of the interface. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't reset the screen. It doesn't stop what you're doing. It does not crash the radio. It simply resets the touch panel itself. Um, which doesn't change any of your graphics or where you are. So to me, based on what I've seen so far until they get that firmware, uh, that dodgy firmware thing worked out with the chip provider, uh, that seemed to me to be the best resolution yet because to, to a user, you don't even know what happened. If they don't tell you what happened, you'd never know what happened. So uh, the bottom line is that uh, EdgeTX development continues. 
They continue to work very hard. Um, they, they are doing amazing things with, with debugging tools and solder and putting trace wires on the back of these things to sort it out. I've, I've been kind of watching the progress and I've just been very impressed with the level of professionalism and dedication they have in working out the issues. So keep your eye on edge, you know, as soon as there's information and news to report, believe me, I will be sharing it as soon as it becomes available. But right now, uh, all I can say is that they are um, working hard to resolve it. And I don't believe the pro the programming issue related to the touch lockup has anything to do with edge at all. I think they're using edge to try and fix the firmware issue as a result of what's been put on the chips on these radios. So more to come on that. And, uh, we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll see how that materializes over the next, uh, you know, week or so. Um, I, I think that, like I said, they're working hard on it. Uh, they worked hard on it over the weekend and they worked pretty hard on it today too. So a lot of activity on that front to be sure. All right. Um, so let me, let me just check the comments and then if there's nothing else about the, the driver or any of the material I just covered, we'll call it a video. Um, so the like button. Yeah, Robert, thanks for doing that. Yeah, guys, hit the like button. That's really helpful. There's uh, 26 people watching right now, only 10 likes. That'd be great if you could hit that like button. That's very helpful to the videos. It helps with placement. So if you guys don't mind, uh, I'd appreciate that. And then uh, four millimeter is 0.15 inches and freedom numbers <laughs> for you, for you Americans. Uh, awesome, Brutus. Uh, lol, lol, lol. All right, good. Everyone's had a good time tonight. Good. All right. Well, hey, that's it. That's it for the video. I think, um, more to come on this, you know, you guys will, if you get on discord, you, I know you'll see me using it, but, uh, so far based on what I saw tonight, no reason to box it up and send it back. I'll give it a whirl and see how I see it. We see what it's like to live with it. Now I'll, I'll try and give you some feedback on, on that front over time, especially as I get my hands on the next build. All right. Well, I appreciate you all joining me. I'd like to give a special shout out to my patrons. Say thanks to you guys for supporting the channel and making this kind of video possible. You guys that help me, you know, make content like this. So I appreciate you. Thanks for uh, your support of the channel. And I would encourage you if your budget submits and uh, or or permits and you're so inclined, if you'd like to join me on Patreon, you can do that for as little as three bucks a month. You can help support the channel if you like this kind of material. So that's all I've got for tonight. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you liked the content. If you did and you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and a notification bell so you know new material hits the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.